What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool video where we will welcome Arne Slot to Liverpool because with a detailed, in-depth, tactical analysis of Arne Slot's Feyenoord and even before that his Azad Akmar side which finished joint first with Ajax in 2020 before during Covid, when Covid broke out, the Dutch league stopped and they never resumed. So he could have even won the league title with Azad Akmar and he just broke the Feyenoord all time time record points total. He got 82 points last season where he won Feyenoord the Dutch league and this season he went one better. He got to 84 points which is now a new record in Feyenoord's club history, league history as the highest points total that Arne Slot has finished with, uh, that any manager has finished with and he rounded off his Feyenoord tenure with a 4-0 win over Excelsior which wrapped up a very impressive three seasons at Feyenoord where he lost a lot of players in his first season and he had to rebuild the Feyenoord side and then in the second season after losing five key starting players Feyenoord went on to win the league and if it wasn't for PSV Eindhoven's absolutely mind-blowing season Feyenoord could have won the league twice I mean 84 points in a league where there are only 34 games played is very very impressive I think and Feyenoord conceded only 26 goals in 34 games, scoring 92 goals this season with Feyenoord. But listen to this, PSV Eindhoven in a 34 game season got as many points as Man City got in a 38 game Premier League season. 91 points for PSV, scoring 111 goals and conceding only 21 goals. So as I said, PSV Eindhoven just had an absolutely barnstorming, amazing season. Of course, the Premier League will be a lot tougher, that's without question, but he also left Azad Akmar with their highest points per game average, 2.11 of any uh, other manager in Azad Akmar's history. So Arne Slot has broken records at both Azad Akmar and Feyenoord, which bodes well for Liverpool, of course. And in his first season, he went all the way to the Europa conference league final and he told UEFA we are an attacking minded team that likes to have a lot of the ball and we play with a lot of intensity when we don't have the ball we want to win it back as quickly as possible by being aggressive and pressing to win back possession I think we are a team that is difficult to beat and that's a pretty similar playing style to Liverpool's playing style but let's dive deep into the tactics and performances of Arne Slot at Feyenoord. Feyenoord's trajectory has shown a positive trajectory from the 20, 2021 until 2024. In 2021 Feyenoord averaged 2.09 points per 90 minutes. Their expected points were 2 uh, per 90 minutes, ranking third in both metrics. And then the next season saw an improvement where they won the league with a 2.4 points uh, per game with a notable overperformance compared to their expected points of 2.15 in the current 2023-24 season they are very they are maintaining high standards they have an even better points per game ratio than uh, than last season uh, almost identical expected points of 2.45 which is really really impressive so their average points per game was 2.4 seven which is almost two and a half points per game yes the Eredivisie is a league where there are a lot of uh, smaller weaker sides but still that's very very impressive and what I uh absolutely love is that each year Feyenoord's offensive numbers have progressed and got better and better season after season. Their goals per game went from 2.2 to 2.7 from his first season to his last season outpacing their expected goals which also saw a significant jump this season. They averaged a 2.98 expected goals per 90 minutes which is almost a free goals average expected goals per 90 minutes minutes which is really really impressive as well and also their non-penalty expected goals uh, per shot is an impressive 0.14 indicating high quality chances so when Feyenoord are shooting they are high quality shots Touches in the opposition box also increasing each season, reaching 43 touches per 90 minutes. 
this season with Feyenoord that is very impressive. And also from set pieces they were the most, most threatening team, averaging 0.6 expected goals. And Liverpool are traditionally very very good from set pieces, at least they were under Jurgen Klopp, so hopefully Arne Slot can continue that and keep building on that. Their field tilt, which is a very specific metric indicating the attacking dominance, is the highest this season with 70% field tilt, which means that they overpowered and dominated their most of their opponents. Defensively also Feyenoord has been very consistent, ranking first in expected goals against per 90 minutes, so that metric shows how many clear chances, how many good chances the opposition gets and also the notable decrease to 0.74 per 90 minutes in the current season. Their goals conceded per 90 minutes have also decreased over the years, aligning closely with their expected goals against metrics. The team's pressing intensity and efficiency remain very high. So in summary, Feyenoord has shown a marked improvement in both offensive and defensive metrics, each season improving and getting better better and better over the past three seasons. Their performance in the current season has reflected a well-balanced and effective team on both ends of the pitch, which, which is really encouraging. And that's why, you know, Liverpool's data analysis team picked out Arne Slot as the best candidate to follow Jurgen Klopp as the next manager. And now let's look at the Arne Slot's tactics that he used at Arza Dagmar and then a more in-depth look at his tactics used at Feyenoord. So in possession, Azad Akmar used to build the attacks with the double pivot. So in the 2019-20 season, where Anastot used in his preferred 4-2-3-1 structure a, a double pivot, which could be Endo and Trenox Ronald, or McAllister and Trenox Ronald, or uh, Endo and McAllister, so any of those combinations. And I think Liverpool will look to sign a defensive midfield as well. We need somebody who is better than Endo, who is maybe younger as well. In order to create space for the versatile attacking unit ahead of them, the double pivot would drop back into the back line and this created central pockets of space through which they could progress play but also enable more consistent advances from the fullbacks and guaranteed cover if possession was lost. And that's uh, what is great about the double pivot that uh, when you lose possession you have two defensive midfielders shielding the back four. So in this graphic you can see Gertrudia, Hanko and Hartmann and Kökçü and Wiefer are the double pivot that are dropping back. Gertrudia is a very versatile center back who is very fast. He can play right back and left back as well. And Hanko is also very versatile. He can play in a number of defensive positions. With Feyenoord, uh, Arne Slot retained the same shape and this is now with Feyenoord, uh, Kökçü and Mats Wiefer rather than dropping into the back line they operated close to the center backs but primarily beyond the opponent's first line as you can see here this is the opponent's first line and Kökçü and Wiefer are in the in that space between the opposition's attack and midfield they used short passes to bounce the ball around opposing pressure often in third man combinations in a way not unlike Roberto De Zerbi uses his double pivot at Brighton regular fullback Peders fullbacks Pedersen and Hartman would remain deep in the build-up but then support in more advanced areas as play progressed up the pitch. Here the double pivot would support underneath to restart attacking moves or switch play with Feyenoord's right winger often moving inside to support the number 10 earlier than the equivalent in Anna Slot's Azad Akmar team resulting uh, in a midfield box uh, that could overload opposing uh, central midfield uh, uh, players trios and this gave the double pivot the opportunity to break lines centrally as well as dominate the ball in the first phase of the build-up. And let's talk about the attack. At Azad Akmar, Anaslot's double pivot supported underneath the main attacking quartet of the number 10, two wide attackers and the center forward. The fullback started deep and wide and to eventually support with delayed runs as the front four narrowed. In the 2019-20 season, fullbacks Svensson and Vina provided 44% of the team's crosses. So that could result in a Robertson and Trenox Arnold going back to their more traditional fullback role. So it will be very interesting, especially what Arne Slot does with Trenox Arnold. I think that will be the biggest question going forward from Liverpool's point of view, tactically at least. 
So on the left right-footed winger Idrissi initially held his width longer, from there he would look to cut inside on his right foot and shoot or combine with his central teammates. He ranked uh, joint third for dribbles in this season, in that season um, with um, you know Anna Slots as Dagmar and Myron Boadu who was the striker at Az Dagmar at the time. He would also pu pushing high higher. He was also in the front line and uh, Idrissi would push higher to join him there. So as you can see Boadu is the striker here and Idrissi on the wing pushing forward sometimes playing as a second striker. Mo Salah would love to do that I think he would love to play as a second striker of Darwin Nunez or Cody Gakpo whoever or Diogo Jotto whoever plays up front because Mo Salah I think would be great as a second striker because the more the closer he is to the goal the more he can affect games with goals and assists and shots and you know all kinds of uh, offensive actions, dribble, dribbles, drawing fouls, penalties, etc. On the right there was much more interchange uh, in this team uh, between left-footed right-winger Stengs and number 10 David. At times both would play inside almost as two number 10s. This gave right back Sven so much more space to advance into earlier attacking moves. And Arna Slot used a similar attacking structure at Feyenoord with the double pivot supporting right-sided rotations. Uh, these movements occurred earlier than at AZ. However, and with better passers in central defense, the team managed more combinations between the lines and they were more equipped to break more compact blocks. And of course, Arne Slot's um, you know, most famous tactic is the high press out of possession. Uh, at AZ, Slot favored an organized and purposeful press, often using the winger and fullback pairing to jump aggressively when opposing teams sent the ball wide. This would leave a backline of three with the double pivot screening and covering ahead of them, which makes a lot of sense. The number 10s push the cross to support this wide jump, often pressing the opposing pivot player closest to the ball. The center forward supported this pressure by locking play one way and ideally preventing the ball between the opposition center backs. So as you can see, Boadu the striker and Sugavara the right winger is pressing the two um, PSV Eindhoven defenders and then you know Stanks uh, who, uh, who is another you know number 10 is pressing uh, this PSV player and then Mitsto and Kopminers the two double pivots at that time they are covering the midfield free of PSV Eindhoven and Svensson is playing is pressing the left winger of PSV Eindhoven as well. In this setup the double pivot were extremely aggressive without the ball, often jumping to press very high. The player on the far side of the ball had license to leave their covering role and move towards opposing midfielders, much like how Liverpool like to swarm uh, players. Uh, if you go with just one player pressing, that uh, the press falls apart, but if you go in packs and hunt in packs, go with four or five players pressing the opposition, that uh, creates uh, you know, you know, confusion uh, in the opposition and they are they have to go long or they, if they lose the ball in their final third, uh, in their uh, you know, defensive third, so sorry, then uh, the opposition team are already very close to goal. At Feyenoord, Arne Slot has employed a more variety in the front line when pressing, despite setting up in the same 4 2 3 1 shape. He has times, at times included an extra player pressing high with a front free, both man for man against the back free or against the back row four. And defensively, Arne Slot's teams don't overcommit to the high press. If such opportunities aren't available, they are comfortable dropping into a more reserved block. And I think defensively, Liverpool have to get it right with Arne Slot because we conceded too many goals last season and we need to improve our dreadful record of always conceding first in games. In uh, like 40, more than 40% of our games, we conceded first. Uh, and in a whole season, that's unsustainable. You can't win uh, the Premier League or the Champions League or, or any European Cup doing that. At Az Dagmar, the wingers worked back to offer deeper support alongside the double pivot in a 4-4-1-1 defensive shape. Here the number 9 and 10 alternated who would pressure the center backs and who covered access into the double pivot. And this is the Feyenoord setup. As you can see, they are defending in a 4-4 in a uh, two shape uh, where even the wingers drop back to defend in a 
in a really good uh, reserved block when required. So Arneslot can be versatile when it comes to uh, defensive uh, shapes and I think Liverpool would need to do that. So to summarize Arneslot's achievements in a relatively short career as a head coach have established himself as a manager capable of uh, managing a really big club in a really big league. Both in and out of possession, his teams have proven an interesting and effective watch. It would be fascinating to see, uh, like uh, his countryman Ten Hag, can he transfer that to the Premier League? I think Ten Hag is not a good example, but even because even when he was the Ajax manager, a lot of uh, Dutch uh, journalists and experts criticized Ten Hag for his tactics. He had the best team in the league, Ajax, with the most money, and yes, they won the league, but uh, there were tactical deficiencies clear even at, at Ajax. And you can see he got exposed really, really badly in the Premier League, finishing 8th with Man United, which was their lowest position in the last, like, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years. So that's it for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later, guys. Goodbye.